Do you remember the 1999 NBA playoffs? What about the 2019 playoffs? This chart shows every spot a player made a shot for both of them. In the 1999 playoffs, the Orlando Magic attempted 29% of their overall shots behind the three-point line, the most out of any team for that playoff season. In the 2019 playoffs, the Houston Rockets shot 51% behind the line. Three-point shots have taken over the NBA in a way that's totally changing how professional basketball works. The NBA introduced the three-point line in 1979 as a way to boost points and reduce congestion under the net. The problem you have is that there is no player in the NBA at that point who can shoot a three-pointer on a consistent basis, none. David Barry is a sports statistician who is all about the numbers. Either you can measure it or you can't measure it. And if, and if, you don't, if you're not measuring it, then you're just making it up. In the 1970s, basketball teams were used to focusing on two-point goals layups, dunks, and some mid-range shots. Shooting from far out was an unnecessary risk without reward. If you were Steph Curry in 1978 and you started launching 25-foot shots, your coach would bench you. The shot from five feet away is two points. The game we play is throw the ball down to the guy who's seven feet tall and let him shoot a three-footer. Three-point shots were hard. Players weren't used to making them. And after Chris Ford of the Celtics sank the first official three-pointer in the NBA, not much changed. According to the stats website, basketballreference.com, in the whole 1979 to 1980 season, all teams in the league attempted almost 7,500 shots. Only 227 of those were three-point attempts, and they only scored 64 of them. It wasn't until the 86-87 season that the league made over 100 successful three-pointers across one season. In the 90s, the NBA tinkered with the arc of the line, moving it closer to the net in an attempt to make scoring more points easier. Players like Michael Jordan and Steve Kerr took advantage of it, but it didn't produce the intended effect. The league moved it back just a few years later. By 1999 to 2000, 20 years after the line was introduced, the entire league attempted just over 1,000 threes out of almost 7,000 shots. Fast forward to 2018-2019, and that number is over 2,600. That's an increase of 150%. That shift has to do with one big statistic. 33% from three is as good as 50% from two. In other words, if you can make one-third of your shots from the three-point line, it's as good as making half your shots closer to the net. As the NBA has skewed more towards analytics, it became a factor of like, we should just be shooting threes. Like, twos don't matter nearly as much anymore. James Dater is a sports journalist at SB Nation, who's written features on the three-point line. Volume shooting from three ends up netting you a better result than going from two, assuming that you have the shooters to be able to support it. Daryl Morey, a longtime basketball exec who's obsessed with statistics, is often credited with figuring this out. In 2014, he instructed the D-League Rio Grande Valley Vipers to cut out long two-point shots and shoot more threes. At the time, NBA teams were averaging just over 20 three-point attempts per game. The Vipers started shooting almost 50. And Maury's strategy worked. They ranked first in the league in offense, and it was clear that they were going to transform the game. And what happens if you get five of those guys and put them on your roster at once? So suddenly, instead of having all these Swiss Army knives on a court, you've got a bunch of scalpels, but they're all doing what you want them to do, which is like, let's hit more shots from three. Soon, the NBA latched on, and three-point shooting skyrocketed, as did three-point successes. In that 2019 playoff season, the Houston Rockets became the first team to shoot more threes than twos. This tool that started out as a tough shot to make more points is now standard practice. Oh, there's a very real chance this is completely breaking the game of basketball. The fear is, do we lose that kind of magic and that element of here are two teams approaching the game of basketball with very different approaches and let's see what happens when these styles clash versus two teams that it just becomes a who's able to shoot more threes and who's able to hit more threes and that's kind of it. 
This becomes a problem when your team can't hit enough threes. Even Maury, who started the three-point revolution, has run into this issue. Now he's managing a team in the 76ers where they don't have those three-point shooters. So now it's suddenly like, well, you know, we can't compete because we our best players are interior players. And even when you do have three-point shooters, there's another problem. We could get to that point that it's just boring because everyone's trying to do the same thing. There are a few options to fix these issues. The NBA can move the three-point line back to make it harder, but that might not help forever. The players are simply going to learn how to shoot that longer distance, and very soon you will find yourself back in exactly the same position, but now they're going to be shooting 26-footers. Damian Logo Lillard already does this. In this clip from the 2021 NBA All-Star Game, you can see him shoot so far back from the line, he's actually closer to the half-court logo. They can move the three-point line closer, which would decentivize deep threes and encourage a tighter-knit game like there was in the past. They could raise the rim, making all shots harder to sink. Or there could be more drastic changes. There are some wild suggestions like limiting the amount of threes a team can attempt in a quarter, and then kind of like having a lightning round at the end of the game where suddenly you can just shoot as many as you want for full points. The NBA has no official plans to change rules at the moment. And even though there's a lot of commentary about the three-point line, the statistics ultimately tell another story. I have lots of data on gate revenue, um, so I simply looked at what drives gate revenue. Do teams that shoot more threes have more or less demand? And the answer is it has no effect at all. They don't, fans don't care. The vast majority of your fans are watching because they're emotionally attached to the team. That's what's important. 